Mara, and today we're going to talk about how Android improvements for tablets, foldables, and accessories can help developers build great apps for productivity. Tablets and foldables are great for consuming content, but even better when it comes to creating content. Optimize your app for these larger screen size to help users do more when it comes to a range of tasks. Help users write emails, take notes, or be creative in your app. We'll cover how to leverage the extra screen space and how to use keyboards, stylus, and mice to help users create something new. I'll pass it over to Rand to talk more about ways to lay out your app for productivity. Thank you. When we think about tablets, foldables, and Chrome OS devices, what really sets them apart is their screen size, which is why we call them large screen devices. There is so much more space for our apps. So as developers and designers, what do we do with it? One option is to take our phone UI and just stretch it out. So we are showing the same amount of information on a bigger surface. The problem with this is that the information density drops and it doesn't make any more efficient or productive use of that extra real estate. Let's take a look at some better solutions that use some kind of two pane layout like list detail and supporting pane. The list detail layout, which consists of two columns, is ideal for browsing content and quickly tapping into it. In this example of a messaging app, the left pane displays a list of conversations, while the right pane shows the currently selected chat. Notice how the content on the right is linked to the selection made in the list which is why this can also be seen as a parent-child relationship. Another common two-pane layout is the supporting pane. In this layout, the primary content is displayed in one pane, while additional content such as recommendations or comments are presented in the right pane as we can see here. Being able to read through this CodeLab document and see the comments right there made the entire review process faster and smoother. I had all the information I needed in front of me. We've seen firsthand how users in our own apps at Google love the ability to browse faster and get things done without navigating back and forth between screens. Here's an example from our own settings app. Let's say I want to change my brightness level and wallpaper style. On the phone or a single pane layout, I need to go into display, make a change, then navigate back tap wallpaper in styles, and then make another change. But if I unfold my pixel fold, I get this nice two-pin layout, which allows me to tap display, make a change, tap wallpaper, and make another change. I've accomplished the same task faster and quicker. Sometimes users want to focus on a specific item, like reading a document or a long email, and they'll want to easily assign more screen space for a specific layout or even quickly switch to a single layout temporarily. Pane expansion let users easily adjust multi-pane layouts by dragging a pane handle, and it will be available for material free adaptive library and activity embedding later this year. Let's take calendar, for example. Here I see my Wix agenda. I can drag the handle on the left to reveal a monthly view. When I tap on a meeting, I can see its details right there, and I don't need to go back and forth between screens. This is super useful when I want to schedule a meeting with my manager. On the left side, I can edit the meeting details, and on the right side, I can see a joint view of our schedule, so it becomes super easy to pick the right slot that won't conflict with anything. Multitasking is natural on large screen devices, as users can launch two different apps running side by side. This is great opportunity for us to keep our users within our applications context, even when they get attachments or links to other apps. Here is an example. I was texting with Paul earlier, and he sent me a link to a page at developer.android.com. When I tap the link, it opens Chrome next to my messaging app, so I don't lose the context of our conversation. I can easily take a look at that page and text Paul thank you without switching between apps. When I'm done messaging, I can drag the handle, giving more space to Chrome, as I want to focus on reading that page now. Similar thing will happen when I get an email with a PDF or docs attached to it. 
Gmail will open it side by side. The good part? All you need to do is add one flag to your launch activity intent. We know that users love split screen for multitasking. Many of our pixel fold monthly active users use it to be more productive. So we have seen how layout design can make it easier for users to consume and engage more. Next, Miguel will tell us how input devices can make it easier for users to create content. Thanks, Ran. I'm Miguel. Now let's take a look at how to leverage different input devices like Stylus for more productive experiences. Stylus users on Android can remain more productive with new support for handwriting and text fields. You no longer need to put down your stylus when you need to input some text into a text field. If your app uses standard text components, handwriting and gestures with your stylus will work automatically. For text fields in Compose, you'll need to make sure to update to version 1.7. For edit text in Views and other text input elements in Web Views, no additional work should be needed, but you should test to make sure everything is working properly in your app. However, there's two reasons you may need to do additional work to enable stylus handwriting in your app. First, watch out if you're using a fake text field. If you have a UI element that looks like a text field, but the actual text field is exposed only after it's tapped, you need to use the handwriting delegation APIs to support stylus handwriting, as shown in the sample code. Stylus motion over the fake text input field view will cause the callback to be invoked. The implementation of this callback should trigger the transition to show and focus the real edit text. Custom views which support text input require the following steps to support stylus handwriting. First, enable handwriting initiation. Then declare handwriting support and editor info. Provide cursor location and other position data to the input method editor via cursor anchor info. Support handwriting gesture operations like select and delete. And finally, show the stylus handwriting hover icon when the user is hovering with their stylus. Check out developer.android.com for more information on handling custom text editors. Let's take a look at another way Android is enabling your app to help users be more productive with the new notes rule. The notes rule enables users to quickly access their favorite note-taking app so they can jot down that fleeting idea or take notes while multitasking. For note-taking apps, the notes rule will open up new entry points into your app and allow for more productive experiences. With Notes Roll, users can select the preferred default note-taking app. This allows the app to open from the lock screen and also open as a floating window for enhanced note-taking while multitasking. Users can set the preferred note-taking app from settings. How do you register your app for the Notes Roll? You need to declare a few things in your app manifest, including handling the create note intent, setting the show when locked attribute to true so your app is accessible from the lock screen, setting the turn screen on attribute to true so your app can turn the device screen on. Additionally, the activity that handles the create note intent should support multi-instance. When you're launched with the create note action, you should check if the use stylus mode extra is set to true. If so, you should launch a note that accepts stylus input. The user should immediately be able to draw with their stylus or finger. When the notes roll is enabled on the device, there's a shortcut on the lock screen to launch your note-taking app. When launched from the lock screen, your app should ensure user privacy. Don't allow access to historical notes unless the user has given consent while unlocked. To check if the app was launched from the lock screen, you can use KeyGuard Manager's Is KeyGuard Locked? If true, you know the device is locked and can respond accordingly. Additionally, if you want to allow the user to unlock the device for full access to your app, you can use Request Dismiss KeyGuard, as shown here. Upon success, the app can allow the user full access to their historical notes and other sensitive features and settings. Next, content capture is a key capability of note-taking apps. 
With content capture, users can take screenshots of the display behind the note-taking app's floating window. Users can capture all or part of the display, paste the content into their note where they can annotate or highlight the captured content. For example, here I am looking up how to optimize my app for large screens, and I screenshot this website and write an annotation to remember to implement window size classes. Let's take a look at how you can do this in your note-taking app. Your note-taking app should provide a UI affordance that launches the action launch capture content activity for note intent action. When content capture succeeds, paste the image into the note. Now that we've seen how the new notes row makes it easier to access your note-taking app, let's take a look at improving your inking experience within your app. Low latency is key to having a responsive inking experience. Reducing latency minimizes the amount of delay between when you move your stylus and when the ink appears on the screen. Based on developer feedback, we've introduced new APIs to make low latency easier for apps that use Canvas for rendering. Along with our existing GL Front Buffered Renderer API, which assists apps in front and multi-buffered OpenGL rendering to achieve low latency. There's two additional low latency APIs we've introduced that are suited for apps using Canvas rendering. First, Canvas Front Buffered Renderer supports hardware accelerated Canvas rendering to a hardware buffer. This API provides more flexibility with layer ordering and color space management. Next, low latency Canvas view leverages the traditional view system for implementing the multi buffered content and abstracts all surface view usage for greater simplicity. And we've seen great improvements with our app partners that have adopted our low latency libraries. After implementing our Android low latency graphics and motion prediction jetpack libraries, Infinite Painter saw an over 5x reduction in latency, from 60 to 90 milliseconds down to 8 to 16 milliseconds. Check out the video case study to learn more about Infinite Painter's improvements. Now that we've seen new ways to leverage Stylus to make your app more productive, let's take a look at optimizing for other input devices. Thank you, Miguel. In addition to the Stylus, another essential input device is physical keyboard. They really shine when users need to do a lot of text input, like long emails, documents, or blog posts. As a developer, you should make it easy for users to navigate your app with keyboard navigation. Users should be able to navigate to all elements in your app with just their keyboard. It's also important that frequently used keyboard shortcuts are supported in your app. To help educate your users, consider adding keyboard shortcuts to your context menus. You can also add entries to the keyboard helper, which users can bring up to learn more about system and in-app integrations by pressing meta and forward slash. Common keyboard shortcuts for text editing, like Control-C and Control-V for copy and paste, are supported by default. To improve the experience for keyboard, mouse, trackpad, and stylus users, we recommend implementing hover states and keyboard focus. All interactive components should have a hover state so that users can understand that they can interact with them. Furthermore, interactive components should show a visual cue to indicate which component has the keyboard's focus. The visual effects for these interactions like hover and keyboard focus should be different from other interactions such as clicks to avoid confusion. These improvements will make sure users with a stylus, keyboard, or mouse can be more productive in your app. Check out developer.android.com to learn more about supporting different input devices. Thanks for joining today. We're really excited about what you can build to help users create more on Android. We have lots more to say on these topics. Check out developer.android.com and the links in the description for more info.